All right, so we're going through the, I guess, build process of a Seblod site and going through different uh, content type construction or content object construction through this. And James is going to show us exactly how it's all done. Go ahead, James. All right, so for this example, what we're going to do is build um, a very simple uh, staff directory that you might use on any website. Um, and, you know, a particular example here is going to be a directory for consultants. Uh, so we're going to create a content object uh, that um, allows people, allows individual consultants to log in and, and edit their own bio information. Um, and uh, the particular fields that will be associated with that uh, consultant content type will be um, an a profile image, uh, body text for their bio information, what company they belong to, what their position is, and uh, their links for social media sites. Yeah, cool. Okay. So start first by creating a new category, and this is just going to be for all of our um, all of our user information to go in. So just to keep it nicely segregated. So. I might just add that we've just installed Seblot on this site. So this is a fresh Joomla install with Seblot on it. Okay, so um, this is going to be our staff directory category. Okay, so go into components and go into Seblot. And we first of all, before we do anything, we want to go and create a new app folder. And this is really important for later on if we want to package this up and install it somewhere else. So it's going to take the entire contents of the folder that we create, anything that we put in that folder, and that's going to become what it zips up and, and makes installable. So we'll call this staff directory. And you know you can add an, you know, an icon or change the color of whatever what pops up, so we'll just make this nice and fluoro green. Lovely color. Mm -hmm. And staff directory. Make that black. All right. So save and close that. Right, now we need to go into our form and content types. Right, so you can see here these are the these are the content objects that Joomla comes standard with: articles, categories, users, and user groups. You're familiar with that already. So we're going to create a new one, and um, you get this modal pop-up, which is asking you what type of content you want to create. So we said that we want to be able to users to be able to log in and edit their own stuff. So it's going to have to have the behavior of a user. So we click on user. All right. Um, consultant and because it's a user Seblod has already added a few fields that all users have already to this content type which is handy in a strange order though so that should be down there okay now we add our new fields so what did we say we're going to add a user bio inf um, field so I'm going to just prefix everything with um, CONS for consultant. Okay. And the type of field is going to be. Image, I guess. There's yep. a lot of different fields there. Heaps, yeah, absolutely. Information for the label. So that's what a user will see when they're entering something in. Yep. And. There's a bunch of um, different settings here that you can go through and I mean, in your own time, have a look at. Um, basically just changes the way where images are stored and whatever. So each new consultant, their images are gonna be stored in their own folder within the images folder. That's the default, but you can you know, make it so that all images are just stored together in the images folder or whatever you wanna do. Um, and that folder will be, uh, the name of that folder will be the ID of the, um, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. So our next field. So I can see there's quite a bit of a setup process in regards to setting up um, a different content object throughout the sites. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you need to you need to create all the fields manually, but once you've got them, then everything else is really rapid because all the contents are already segregated into its fields. So then pulling it out, making lists and everything. Yeah, it was really, really quick. So 
so their company. And let's just add as well, just the, the social media stuff. So let's say a field for them to put their Twitter handle. And these are just text fields. And their LinkedIn address. Okay, and then save and close. All right, so you'll see that they're all added to that form. Um, so that's the back end. So if we save and close this now, or before we do that, really importantly, we need to make sure that There we go. Staff directory. So now it's saving it. So what we're seeing there are our new custom fields that we've just created amongst all the default custom fields associated with users. Is that right? That's right. Yep. Yep. Or it's not every it's not every user field, but they're the ones that are necessary to create a user. Like you need. I think Joomla requires you to have you know a password field and a confirmed password field a user needs to be associated by um, with an email address because that's the way the Joomla works if you don't have that then things I think will go badly for you <laughs> okay all right so uh, we're gonna have to come back to this because currently we've only edited the admin form but I just want to show you what we've done there so if we go into the user manager and go add new user no we don't want to do that we actually just want to go to the user manager, not the user manager, the article manager, and click new. Sorry, bad information. User manager, because we created a user, and go new, and then you'll get this pop-up, and you'll see our new user content object there, and click on that. And now we've got our custom form that we created. So as we saw there before, um, name, login, name, password, um, confirm password, email, confirm email, and then the custom fields that we created down the bottom here. Okay, so let's just add some information in there. I'll put my own information in. Wow, well, and it was only the other day that I was doing something similar to this using all the Joomla core components and to create new extra user fields was quite a process because you had to go in there and modify the XML mm -hmm. and uh, it wasn't a very simple process. This is so much easier. And if you're scared of code, opening up an XML file, finding out where that XML is supposed to reside, understanding what you're modifying as well is a little bit daunting. This Absolutely. is sort of a, a click through uh, WYSIWYG, not really WYSIWYG, but through a UI, which makes it a little bit friendlier, I guess. Well, just the fact that it's all uh, stored, it's all done within Joomla. You don't need to go to a text editor to yeah. modify any code, not yet at least. Uh, that is certainly a, a big plus. Yeah, absolutely. So I've filled out uh, that form now. Do you have a profile picture I can upload? It's a picture of a llama, I think. <laughs> Excellent. Very true to life. Save and close. All right, so we've added our content in there, but we need to now, um, we want to we want to look at how that information is now going to be displayed in the front end of our website. So um, let's go back into Serblod, Form and Content Type Manager, and Consultant. And now we need to go to the content view. So this is what shows in the full article view in the front end. Okay. So this this is probably where I get confused. On the screen here on the left, we can see all of these like uh, areas or, or something that we can make display in different uh, divs, I guess, within the template. Yeah, okay. So that's the SEB1 template. Um, that is intended to make things easier because it's all the div structures there and it collapses and does all this really neat stuff for you. But yeah, when you're looking at it, it's like, oh my God, what, where do I put uh, my fields? Um, if you click this positions um, 
thing up here, it actually explains to you. I have no idea why that's. There is an image there which will show you where your field will appear if you put it in that particular area okay. on this. Yeah. Um, I've kind of bugged this up because I should have set the app folder first and then all of my fields would be in that app folder. But because I created all my fields and then changed, changed that folder, folder it, they're not in there. So I'll just show you how you would go about fixing something like that. If you go into fields here in Seblon and we can do a really neat search now because we prefixed all of our fields with the right thing. That's a nice little tip as well. Yeah. yeah, definitely try and come up with a common prefix for each com uh, content object. And we can batch them into our stuff directory folder. Problem solved. So do you want me to show you the simpler content? You know, if this is daunting, should show you how to get that. Uh, no, uh, well, yeah, you might as well yeah, because you were talking about that in the interview. Yep. Sure. Okay, so if we go back to seblod.com, I can show you the very lovely products. And this is their app store where you can download different types of uh, content objects. That's, uh, that's right. They're not, not content objects. These are um, all sorts of different plugins from, you know, new types of fields to templates to um, things like that. I don't actually think you can buy packaged um, content objects on here yet, but that's certainly the intention. That'd be really cool. So they may be like a real estate content object yeah. all pre-configured and ready to go. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so here I've just filtered uh, by templates. This is all Seblod, uh, by the way. And the one that we want is this one here. So this is built by the Seblod team. Um, Minima. Minima. Kind of says it all. Yeah. Is all of this... Uh, what was my question? Is is all of this checkout process built with Seblod as well? Yeah, it is. Uh, this is all running off Seblod e-commerce, which is not available to the public yet. It's still something that's under development, but um, it's really exciting to see, you know, going through this checkout process and, and seeing what is eventually going to uh, be introduced to Seblod, which is something that is incredibly powerful, um, a fully customizable, um, you know, ability to create an online store and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, hopefully soon it'll be available. I th I've been begging for it for ages. <laughs> that could be a real game changer as well. Yeah, absolutely. Particularly as we were alluding to before with some, e you know, of the e-commerce components that for whatever reason, haven't been able to keep up with the Joomla um, development cycle. Um, you know, being having something like this where you can just like, have full control over everything, custom content objects that are products that you're selling. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. So I'm just going to save that to your desktop. And let's go and install this. So a Seblod template is installed exactly the same way as you would a Joomla template. Not through the update panel, but through the upload package file. And down the bottom there. Okay, and there's an additional step there where we go into the template manager. So there's Seb one, that's the core one, and you can see, yeah, 44 positions, that's how many of those different things that you um, saw before. Quite complex, but gives you a lot of flexibility. Yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna call this one minimal, and so that's where you select the, um, the template you've just installed, and the app folder and the type. So this is going to be a content slash form. It's not going to be a list. Okay, that's good. That's there now. So if we go back into our content view, and change our template from Seb1 to Minima. Isn't that lovely? Great. <laughs> a lot simpler. Yeah, very minimal. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So we'll add in our fields just like that, just by clicking the cross arrow. And we probably want to also show the username. So 
let's just go into ch filter, change that filter to all app folders and scroll down to find your user name field and we'll add that in there too so what we haven't added is a bio field but we might skip that for now because this, this will give you the um, you know what you need to know all right so these fields now are going to appear in the front end when we when we go to that um, particular article or user profile page Okay, so instead of just creating a link just to that particular page, I want to show you how to create, you know, the, the, the start of what a, a directory would look like. So to do that, we need to have a list and search function. Click new, and it's going to be, we want the output of our items to be in a, in a kind of a blog format. So just uh, chunks of content um, running down the page. And the type of content we're searching for is a consultant. So click create. And we'll call this the staff directory. We also want to save this in our app folder. All right. And so what sort of fields do we want to search for with our, um, with our consultant? We probably want to be able to search for a particular user by name. Yep. So we'll add in the user name field, not the username field. And some of the core ones that we did, probably the most useful one there is their company. So we want to be able to search, you know, filter people by what company that they're in. Okay. Now to execute our search, we need a button. So there's some ones I prepared earlier. Not really. This is what they prepared earlier. So we'll chuck in a search button there. And what are those four select fields that you were just uh, using? Up here? Yes. Okay. So this is where you select which um, app folder uh, you're looking in. So um, if we change the staff directory, here are all the fields that we haven't uh, let's just reset that. Here are all the fields that we've got in that directory. Um, these are all different app folders uh, that you find in Joomla. So uh, Seblot has create, have mimicked all of that um, structure for you. This next filter here is uh, are the different content types um, or and different forms that sure. exist. I can, I can see consultant uh, yep. is amongst them. That's down there. Yep, absolutely. Um, here are the different types of fields. So you can filter by, you know, I'm just looking for a submit button field. I need to change that back to all app folders so I can get them there. Or here is just a, a simple, you know, search by the first letter of the, um, the name of the field. So there's just different ways of um, navigating the ridiculous amount of fields that, um, you know, Seblot includes for free uh, with a standard uh, Seblot installation. Okay, so there's our search type. That's good um, that we've put our search parameters in there. You get this funny little CCK field here. Just don't worry about that. It's hidden. It doesn't show on the front end. It's just something that Seblod uses to associate your search with your content object. Now, we, we need to go now into what's going to show in the front end. So it's kind of this one isn't so intuitive um, you saw that the item um, button was blanked out before so we needed to click on list and then as soon as we clicked on list it says there's nothing available for this view because the item view is what you assign fields to when you're doing a blog layout a list if we'd done um, if we'd said that we wanted to show something in a table or if we had a few more lists templates installed we'd go to list um, but we're doing item Again, we can use the minima template. So you saw we used it before for the content type um, to show the actual full content, but now we're going to use it again for our list, uh, list type. And we add our fields in here. And again, get that username field. And when you say list type, I guess you're kind of referring to like the, the blog layout or the category layout, I guess you could say. Yeah, so um, 
uh, I suppose I just I mix the two together um, because really a, li a list page like let's say that we're um, uh, we just want to create a page that we don't see any search options uh, we just see all of our stuff there on the page right all that is is, is a search you know a search and results page but the search is hidden and the the values are already predefined. So if you think of it like that, that's why search and list are together like that because it's just, you know, the only difference is you're hiding the search form. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so here are all the fields that we're going to see uh, in the results of our of our search, okay? So we've got our search, uh, search fields. We've got our results fields. Now let's have a look at how it looks in the front end. So we'll need to create a new menu item. And we'll call it staff directory. And we'll make it a seblod list. Select our list. Now we can change whether we want it to search on first load. So this is what you would do if you were just creating a list page, right? You'd say, yes, I want it to search on the first load. And in the options over here, you'd hide the search form. but we don't want that. So that should do us, I think. So let's click save and have a look. <laughs> so there we go. We'll probably need to add in another consultant to make this a little bit more meaningful. Mr. Llama. Astro Boy Soup. Should I name that? That would do. Okay, cool. All right, now we've got another content item in there. Let's refresh this page. All right, so now it's it's not doing it's not filtering anything because we haven't set our search parameters. So let's just say we only want to find. <coughs> Peter we only find Peter very cool or if we just want to find people who work at Loudbox Media or PB Web Dev and that's it so you can start to see it sort of come to life like that. Now, you know, we could have made these uh, select boxes like drop down fields or whatever, um, you know, sky's the limit of, of what you can do there. And then again, those drop down boxes that you could define for the company name, they could all be relationships of other different content types as well, right? Absolutely, so there's, um Oh, it's too hard. It, 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 would take, it, would take, it would take 10 minutes, but you you know, you could create, let's say, uh, a content object where you would create a new organization. An organization would be a content object, right? So then um, you'd enter in all your organizations and then you'd have what's called a dynamic select field, which is just looking for all of the organizations and popping them in a select field. And so you add an organization, it'll appear in the drop down, and then you can assign a user to that organization. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah, I saw that in your uh, YouTube tutorials as well. So it's a really good start and really good overview. So I'll, I'll point uh, other people and people watching this video over to your YouTube channel as well where they can get more about Seblod. Awesome. Thank you, James. No worries.